It is Elliot and Nina, and we have a very special guest joining us today here at the cookout. You've probably seen her blowing up all over the internet. Lauren Spencer Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Standing over <laughs> Hey. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. I'm just I just got to Los Angeles. So it's like warm. The vibes are good. Okay. Vitamin D, serotonin. I'm great. Rub it in. Rub it into the rest of the country. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but I love that for you. All right. So first things first, uh, since this is the cookout, you know, we just like to hang out, eat, have fun, play some good music. Mm-hmm. So you got to bring one dish to the cookout. That's our only rule. Mm-hmm. So what would you bring to eat? Mm, probably my mom's mac and cheese. That's like so basic, but like, Seriously, like when I meet somebody in my life, like a friend, I'm like day two. I'm like, you need to eat my mom's mac and cheese. Like she only makes like for she's like, what do you want for your birthday? I'm like, make your mac and cheese and drop it off at my house. Like I'm it's I never had mac and cheese that good. Everyone's like, no, try this one. I try it. I'm like trash. My mom's mac and cheese is the best mac and cheese. So I'm pulling up anywhere with that. People are going to think I'm Gordon Ramsay. Yes. OK, I love yeah. it. Yeah, we got to make sure we get that recipe from you. Um, I got you. All right. So first question, and I feel like I have to ask this. We've been talking about it in the studio. Mm. Who hurt you? (laughs) Too many people. (laughs) Too many people. Um, I definitely, it's like a whole real story. It's definitely about someone. Yeah. And I definitely was like, for like a couple months. And then finally was able to put the pen to paper. Um, but you know, we're just living all songwriters. We've got trauma. We yeah. write it down for other people's enjoyment. That's how it works. <laughs> it's kind of sick when you think about it that way. Like we're enjoying yeah. the trauma, but it's because we're, we're going to through it too. Yeah. I literally have been like teasing a new song and everyone's messaging me being like, I relate to these lyrics so hard. And I put on my Instagram story. I was like, y'all are saying you relate to it. And that makes me feel so good. But at the same time, I'm like, why do you relate to this? Yeah. Like, that <laughs> makes me feel so bad right? that you relate to this because these are like some deep lyrics right now. And that means you were hurt just as bad as I was hurt. So I'm sorry for whatever you went through. Right? Yeah. And we, we're going to get to that song in a second, but for, we got to talk about the one that you got going out. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. You leaked it on TikTok without, you know, mm-hmm. permission. So you weren't supposed to do that, but good job. Yeah. On your part. <laughs> <laughs> because it blows up like right. immediately gets to like 5 million views. Now it's over a hundred million streams. Uh, what was that like for you to, to see that happen and just how it organically blew up like that? Yeah. Um, it I was just so crazy. Like watching the numbers go up and watching, like I've had videos go viral, but I haven't had something to that effect where every time I'm scrolling on my free page, video after video, after video is my sound and people that, I've looked up to my whole life for like following me and telling me they like it. And it was just so crazy. Cause you didn't, you didn't never expect that to happen right. on one of your videos. But then also at the same time, it's so just amazing because you've been writing for so long, you've been working for so long and you're like, this is the moment. Like I went through the trauma for a reason. Like people like it, people connect with it. People want to hear my music. It definitely feels like you're, you're going in the right direction and validates kind of all your hard work. Absolutely. What were some of like the the bigger names that surprised you that started the uh, that you were looking up to? Yeah. Um, I mean, Julia Michaels started following me okay. and messaged me. And she's literally like, if you recorded my sessions in my sessions, I'm like, let's do the Julia Michaels thing or let's do the Julia Michaels JP thing. Like both of them followed me. And yeah. I thought that was really cool. Um, Jimmy Fallon put me on his story. What? Um Dan from Dan and Shay and I like love country music. I love Dan and Shay. He reached out to me and then just like a couple TikTokers that I've I've always liked and followed and I love their page and they've just like followed me back because they saw it on TikTok. It's just so, so crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's unreal to see that. But it seems like it's a they want to say it's an overnight success because that's easy to say. But mm-hmm. in reality, you've been doing this like for years, like you know, into yeah. song contests as a kid. Like yeah. most recently did American Idol like a couple years mm-hmm. ago. Now you may not have won the contest, but I say you're winning in life. 
But yeah. <laughs> uh, what did those experiences teach you, you know, going through that, that contest process, you know, when you're a kid and American? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially American Idol, you're constantly, I grew up in a town where there just wasn't really people that sang and did music and kind of like smaller town vibes, you know, the big city was far away. Um, so constantly being around other people that did what I did was one, just super inspiring and so fun. But at the same time, I would watch other people perform and be like, they were so good. Their falsetto was so good or their stage performance was so good. And I'd be like, I need to be that good. Like whatever they were good at, that that was an area I didn't excel in. I wanted to be good at it. So constantly watching other people just be so great at their craft inspires me to then pick up the things that I'm not as good at. Um, but it, it was so fun. Like just knowing that other people love music the way you love music because constantly growing up around people that don't, you think you're like one in a million. You're the only person who likes singing and nobody's telling you to shut up. You start singing. Someone's like harmonizing with you instead of telling you to be quiet in math class. And you're like, yeah, okay. We're <laughs> clapping. There's like singing circles. Like it was just so, so inspiring to be all around that. No, that's awesome. That's happy. I'm happy to hear that one because mm-hmm. I feel like if you have a voice that's as great as yours, I would be singing all the time. I was like, is that is it hard for you to not sing like in everyday yeah. situations? Because even people will be like, Lauren, be quiet. Like I'm trying to do something. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, dude. Like I'm you know, I'm singing. And then two seconds later, I'm like, oh, want- oh, sorry. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> like I just do it naturally. All the time, like I'd be making my bed, and I'm like, I'm making my bed, and I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like, you don't need to narrate everything you do with singing. Like, chill. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, I love it. Like, make sure makes your life a musical, you know? Yeah. Um. All right. So you talk. You alluded to it earlier, but I gotta know wh- wh- when is this dropping? This one right here. I- flowers. Flowers aren't just used for big apologies. I guess I should have been more conscious how you spoke to me. First of all, why'd you do that to us? Second, yeah. <laughs> when is that coming out? <laughs> yes, it's definitely like the first day I teased it. Everybody was like, "This is gonna take us on his fingers crossed." Like, <laughs> not her doing this to us again. Yeah. But I like assure everybody, it is not going to take as long as fingers crossed. I'm sure I'll be announcing the release date really soon. Um, but definitely definitely near future i just announced the pre-save yesterday um so pre-save it so we can release it sooner but it definitely it's gonna be my next song so oh, oh for sure it's gonna make me cry my ass out for the rest of my life but i'm here for it i love it, it sounds it great. is like it's really the gut wrencher like <laughs> when i play all my songs for people that's the one they're like dude like really? what is wrong like are you okay like seriously <laughs> i remember i sent it to my boyfriend right after I wrote it and he just responded and was like, babe, are you good? <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm not like, dang. He's like probably questioning, are we good? You know, hearing something like that. He's like, like, did I do something? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that, that does raise an interesting point. You know, you being in a relationship and having a boyfriend, but you're still putting out the sad songs. Like, how is it, is it like easier to write sad music or is it like, you got to get those feelings off before you talk about how you're in a happy relationship. Yeah. So it's actually like flowers, especially is actually, I met my boyfriend and I wrote it about that. So like the chorus, it says, I guess that flowers aren't just used for big apologies. Yeah. And I guess I should have been more conscious. How he spoke to me because like the last person essentially would buy me flowers when they were sorry. Whereas my boyfriend now buys me flowers every week just because he loves me and just because he's like you had a, a, a great day so I just wanted to celebrate you because you're awesome and so then I my boyfriend just started treating me right and I started learning all the things that should have happened in my old relationship so in a way this song paints my boyfriend in such an amazing light mm-hmm. and the old person in not a great light like there's even a line in it that actually says in a second verse um, if it's what you need to tell yourself to sleep at night pretend I haven't found a man who finally treats me right so like it says in it like if if you know what it's about you're like oh her boyfriend's like the bomb (laughs) like we just don't like the ex (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) okay that makes sense that makes sense that's good for you then um that's awesome isn't it great to be in a healthy relationship not in toxic stuff amazing it just feels so wonderful 
but since I've had so many like crappy things happen, my boyfriend treated me right just gives me more sad concepts because I'm like, why wasn't I treated like this before? Or like, why, how come you're great and everybody else isn't? And like, it just makes me reflect on everything. Mm-hmm. But we're definitely, definitely moving into a phase of like, like today I have a session and I'm like, kind of want to write a love song about my boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Like, so I feel like I am a little bit in that zone, but I feel like I'm always able to tap into the sad. Yeah. When we need it. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Cause for sure those songs are hitting and they're hitting everybody right in the field. Yes. Um, and it's crazy because, you know, you're so young, but obviously you have, you know, so much experience. Um, and I saw that, you know, you're, you're an empath and you're going through yeah. the therapy and all this stuff. And you're only like 18. So what would you say to like other teenagers and young adults who like are maybe hesitant to get into counseling and, you know, dealing mm. with mental health and going to therapy? Like how yeah. it worked for you and what advice would you give to other young adults? Yeah. I would say it's definitely scary. Like even like when you say the word therapy, like at first I was like, hell no, I'm not going to therapy. Like, nope, I'm not talking about my stuff. I don't, and it's so different to talk to a friend about your issues than to actually talk. Like when you start talking about it to someone that's like a professional, like you want to cry when you even get into your first session. Cause you're like, Oh my goodness. Am I like trying to like fix myself? Like what is going on? But I would definitely say it takes time to find your counselor and your therapist. If you join your session and just for whatever reason you're not vibing with the counselor and you're just, you feel like the vibe's off, that's just not your counselor. Like when I first went, I had this woman and I love her. She was wonderful, but I straight up lied to her. Like she would be like, so is anything going on in your life? I'm like, no, like I've never had anything that I literally lied to her for like two months. And then I stopped going, didn't go for six months. And then I started going again and to my counselor is now. And I told them everything from the get go. So it's totally about, just connecting with someone, but I could not express more how great and important it is to just, even if your life, you don't need to go to therapy if your life is like terrible and you're like, I hate my life. Like you should go even when you're happy just to have like an unbiased perspective on things in your life. And, you know, they help dig up things and you learn things about yourself. Every time I'm done therapy, I want to call someone and be like, this is what I learned. I'm so happy that he helped me bounce this way you know I I said this to my mom the other day but my therapist made me see it from this perspective and now I completely understand it like you just feel so good and like you have a great head on your shoulders when you do it so even though it's scary worth the risk you can join and talk about none of your issues for 10 weeks if you want and just be like you know what my day was good and just talk about your day and get comfortable with that person it's worth it I say to do it you'll be a better person because of it oh my goodness this couldn't have said it better. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. That's amazing. Yeah. Why didn't I have friends like you when I was 18? Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, unrelated question, Lauren. Because uh, you, you work out. You go to the gym and stuff, right? Oh, yeah. Um, I see. I've been seeing some, like, contradicting things uh, on TikTok and social media about, you know, being hit on at the gym. Like, some people have gym crushes oh. and other people are like, don't bother me when I'm at the gym, is it ever okay to hit on somebody at the gym? Or are you just like, mind your business? So I will say as a gym rat, it's kind of standard practice that when someone's in the middle of like a set or a workout, like don't go up to them. Like when I'm literally mid squat and you're trying to be like, Hey, I'm like, everybody knows I'm trying to finish my set. So like, let me get to my number eight squat. And then when I put the rack down, taking a break, maybe you can come up. I'm all for people shooting their shot. I think it just depends how you're doing it. Like I've had people come up to me and they're just like, Hey, and I'm already uncomfortable. Cause I'm like, that's just me. <laughs> but yeah. they're like, I just want to know if I can get your Snapchat. And then I'm like, Oh, like, sorry. I'm just like not interested or like whatever. Now I have a boyfriend. So I'd be like, I have a boyfriend back up. But <laughs> <laughs> um, like if someone does it in a respectful way, you're like, okay, sure. It is, does make you a little bit uncomfortable. Cause then you walk around the gym and you're like, whatever, but I'm all for people shooting their shot. But if someone comes up and it's like, you know, I saw you doing them squats and I just wanted it. It's like, what? Like, that's disgusting. Why are you doing that? It's so gross. I feel like diminished as a woman. Like, it just depends. Like, you can walk up and say, hey, what's your number? I thought you were cute. That's all right. But also, like, the gym is a place of work. People go there to mentally get their head on straight and work on themselves. And it's not a place where I actually met my boyfriend kind of at the gym. So I can't even say anything. But he was respectful. Like he didn't come up and be like, I saw your ass when you were doing that. Like he was just nice, <laughs> like an angel boy. 
So it really say? just depends. What did he say? How um, did he approach you? We got to know the, the success like, story. It wasn't really like he came up to me like that. It was more of like, we kind of went to the same gyms. We knew of each other. Mm. And then we had like some people that we knew that worked out with each other. And then we kind of started talking. Like, it wasn't really like he came up and was like, hey, like, can I get your number? Right. Like, I would have been like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I probably said no because I would get nervous. Even okay. though I was like, dang, I should have given him my number. But we had seen <laughs> each other at the gym. Many times I was like, I think this guy has the right gym. Like, that we getting a good workout, buddy. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there's there's ways to do it. And just don't be creepy and like trying to come up and spot you on yeah. a spot without asking for <laughs> yeah. some crazy. But also, I just feel like as I feel like most women, and I'm like really outgoing. Yeah. And I would still get uncomfortable. Like there's people that came up to me nicely and just asked for my number. And then I started going to the gym at a different time. Because mm. I was like, that's so awkward. If I see them, I just rejected them. Like, it does make you uncomfortable. Uh, so I will say, like, you know, shoot your shot. Try to be respectful. And because a lot of guys, they ask me, remember when you say no, they're like, they're weird about it, right? Yeah, yeah. But if yeah. they're like, okay, no problem. Like, don't worry. Then you're like, okay, we're still friends. That would chill. Yeah. Like, we're good. <laughs> right, right, right. You got to be able to handle handle the rejection in yeah. a respectable way. Cause yeah. I know, yeah, a lot of people are like, it's all right. I talked to prettier girls anyway. Like, why would you say that? Yeah. <laughs> That's so the, the, like the men on the street in New York, when they walk by and they're like, yeah. Hey, shoddy. And we're like, please stop. And they're like, you're flat anyway. And you're like, what? what <laughs> we going? switched up so quick. Like, yeah. what are you saying? That's crazy. Oh man. But so great to talk to you, Lauren. Anything you want to say to your fans um, about the support for fingers crossed about upcoming flowers before we let you go and get up out of here and let you live your life in LA. Yeah. I mean, I would just say thanks. Like nothing I do is possible without any of the support of my fans. They didn't blow the video up. Like they pre say they listen, they stream, they support me. I love my fans. And I always say, let's cry together. So I can't wait. Flowers comes out. We're all going to be in tears again. And I promise you, it will not take as long as fingers crossed. <laughs> and we're all in this together. And I love you guys. We thank you so much. That's so awesome. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Lauren Spencer Smith, standing ovation. Thank you so much <laughs> for taking the time and joining us here at the cookout. We wish you nothing but the best in your future endeavors. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>